In the early days of the restoration industry, dehumidification was thought to be as simple as opening a window and letting the wet air out. These days, we're a little more advanced, as is the way we manage humidity. The best way to dehumidify is by, as you've probably already guessed, a dehumidifier. I get asked literally every day about dehumidifiers, so I figured it makes sense to cover as many of these questions as I can in a video. If you're looking for answers about dehumidifiers, you've come to the right place. Don't worry, I will try to avoid making this video sound dry. This video has been divided into chapters, so you can skip ahead if you are short on time. However, feel free to stick around for the whole thing if you want to have an in-depth look at dehumidifiers and dehumidification. So dehumidifiers, at least in restoration, are normally used for drying after water damage to a property. Especially when used in conjunction with air movers, they make drying much faster than just relying on natural evaporation. In most circumstances, a dehumidifier is placed inside the area that needs to be dried. In some cases though, like in roof cavities or void spaces, you might want to duct the air in and out with the dehumidifier outside the affected space. Aside from water damage restoration, dehumidifiers can be used simply to control humidity in a space, like when painting or when room contents are susceptible to damage. So how does dehumidification actually work? Let's have a look. Humidity is the measure of moisture in the air a dehumidifier removes said moisture. Since drying relies on evaporation, dehumidifiers are used to speed up the process by artificially removing moisture from the air. This makes drying typically much faster than just relying on materials naturally drying. In restoration, there are two main types of dehumidifier technology, refrigerants and desiccants. We've covered this in a previous video if you'd like a more detailed explanation, but I'll give you a quick overview now. Refrigerant dehumidification uses similar technology to conventional aircon systems or fridges. Wet air is moved through a cold coil, causing vapour to condensate and get captured. This air is then reheated and put back into the environment to absorb more moisture and begin the cycle anew. Desiccants, on the other hand, blow room air through a desiccant wheel, which dries the air. Warm air is now blown across the desiccant wheel, which captures the water. This warm, wet air is ducted to the outside environment where it naturally dissipates into the atmosphere. Typically, refrigerant dehumidifiers are simpler to set up, but are most efficient approximately between 21 and 32 degrees Celsius. Desiccants, on the other hand, have a much wider optimal temperature range, but require a bit more setup. They can also dry to a lower humidity level than refrigerants normally can. Of course, performance will differ between brands and models, but they all set out to achieve the same purpose. If you are trying to dry a colder environment or trying to dry materials with deeply bound water, desiccants are most probably your way to go. If on the other hand, you have a warmer environment and high humidity, refrigerant dehumidifiers might be a better choice. How to use a dehumidifier. Place the dehumidifier in the space you wish to dry. Connect up the drainage hose. Place the other end of the drainage hose to the drain or water collection container. Plug in the power and turn on the machine. If you're using a desiccant, make sure to set up the inlets and outlets in the right places. One of our team here at Agile Equipment Hire can help you plan your setup if you need an extra helping hand. Seems simple enough, right? It can get a little trickier figuring out what type and how many dehumidifiers you actually need for your space. So let's cover that now. How many dehumidifiers do you need? The IICRC S500 standard for professional water damage restoration outlines the dehumidifier formula in its reference section. For the purposes of this video, we will only be covering the simplified version of this formula. If you would like to know more about this detailed formula or have any questions, please feel free to contact us or alternatively, you can read it in the S500. There are a few things that you need to identify before using this formula. Metric cubic volume of the space you want to dry or manage. The class of water, more on this soon, Type of dehumidifier to be used, standard, low grain, refrigerant or desiccant, and the AHAM water removal rating. The cubic volume can be calculated by multiplying the room's length, width and height together. The class of water refers to the classification of the amount and spread of water in the affected space. Each class is described as follows. Class one refers to a space with less than 5% of the space, that is floor, wall and ceiling, affected with minimal water absorption. Class two refers to a space that has between 5% and 40% of that space affected by water ingress 
with water, minimal water absorption. Class three refers to the space that has over 40% of that space affected by water ingress. And class four refers to the space affected by a significant amount of water absorption in building materials, commonly referred to as deeply bound or deeply held water. This type of class usually involves special drying methods and longer drying times. The AHAM rating on a dehumidifier refers to its ability to remove water from the air given standard conditions of 60% relative humidity at 26.67 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Most dehumidifiers will have their AHEM rated listed in the manual or on the manufacturer's website. Once you've identified these things, we can move on to the formula. The formula is pretty simple and if you use the same gear often, it will become second nature in no time. For refrigerant dehumidifiers, we take the cubic meterage of the room and divide it by a class factor to give us the total amount of water removal required in liters. This class factor can be obtained by referring to this table. By identifying what dehumidifier we are using and what class of water we are dealing with, we can obtain the class factor and plug it into the equation. Once the total amount of water removal has been calculated, we divide this by the water removal AHEM rating to give us the approximation of the number of refrigerant dehumidifiers we need for our job. For desiccant dehumidifiers, we have an extra step because desiccants are almost always rated in cubic feet per minute. So we have to convert to cubic feet. First, we take the cubic meterage and convert it to cubic feet by multiplying by 35.31. Then we divide by 60 to convert cubic feet per hour to cubic feet per minute. We can multiply this by the appropriate class factor obtained from the table to get our total CFM needed. Divide the required CFM by the amount of CFM on the machine that you are looking to use and you will have the number of desiccant unit that you need to dehumidify this space effectively. Remember that this formula serves as a guideline, meaning that this is designed to indicate how many machines you might need, but other factors will still be need to be considered when using this formula. Additionally, there should be dehumidification in all areas that are affected. Say if you have a water leak on the second floor and the leak spreads to the lower level. Even though the areas on both floors collectively may be small, you would still need dehumidification on both levels. This also applies to rooms that are on the same level separated by walls. Again, this is a simplified formula and doesn't consider build-out density, the type of construction, air conditioning or weather. If you would like to look at this formula, you can read it in the S500. Again, if you've got any questions, send me an email or call the team and we'll be happy to provide some guidance. Additional equipment. A great partner of dehumidifiers are air movers. By having dry air movement across the surface of the wet materials, rapid water evaporation can occur. Where possible, we highly recommend having enough air movers installed to have air movement across all the wet materials. Additionally, a good way to increase the drying speed is to reduce the space you need to dry. You can do this by containing the wet area with a plastic containment barrier. HEPA air scrubbers also work well with dehumidifiers. Whilst they don't specifically help the drying process, air scrubbers remove floating particles from the air, which can often be a concern after building damage. If you would like to know more about this, check out our video on the use of HEPA filtration devices. Dehumidifier options. Dehumidifiers do come in different shapes, sizes, and have different water removal ratings. It's important to consider these when looking to hire or buy. Things to look for in a dehumidifier are its size, water removal rate, at AHEM and saturation, temperature operating range, ducting options, portability, and the durability of the casing and internal parts. Dehumidifier tips. Here are some tips that you may find useful when using a dehumidifier. When setting up a dehumidifier with a drain hose, try not to have the drainage hose go too much higher than the machine itself. This may cause the, the pump to fail and cause a water leak. When it comes time to remove the dehumidifier, Turn the machine off and allow it to defrost. Go and pack up other pieces of equipment, then return back after five minutes to purge and turn off the machine. Doing this will avoid water leaking out of the machine in transit. Be mindful of the unit's power usage, making sure not to exceed the amount of power in the property. Overloading a circuit will cause a trip and this can cause a whole host of problems. To confirm if the dehumidifier is working, check the sensors on the outlet and inlet of the machine. You should see an increase in temperature and a sizable decrease in relative humidity. If your dehumidifier does not have these sensors, you could always use a hygrometer to manually measure the inlet and outlet of this machine. So that's it. 
That's the quick rundown of what you need to know about dehumidifiers for restoration. If you have any questions, please email or call the team at Agile Equipment Hire. Our team has been doing restoration work for more than two decades. We're not just another hire company, we are veterans in the restoration industry and know the gear and systems you need to make your water damage job successful. We have one of the largest inventories of restoration equipment in Australia, and with locations in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne, you're never too far from an Agile Equipment Hire warehouse. If you're after hiring any dehumidifiers or would like to know any more about our other restoration equipment, call us at 1300 092 647 or visit us at our website at agileequipmenthire.com.au. Have a great day.